Hello, this is Jones 1039. Yeah. Hello, this is Jones 10395. Another Lego review. If you're wondering why I'm doing Legos a lot more lately, is I really don't know why, but I will be putting at least one airsoft video up probably within the next six hours. Depends. Um, I know I will have it up in the next six hours. It's just a matter of when I do it. But yeah. This is on a, uh, another homemade Lego blowback pistol. This isn't electric. This is, um, like, I don't know because I've never done this before, but I'm trying to think of the name. Rubber band blowback, I guess. It doesn't shoot anything. It's just for show or just for not effective realism. Um, yeah, I didn't really like the electric ones because I had a big engine sticking out on the side and then I had, like, covered up with my hand or whatever. So, yeah, so I made this. Um, yeah. I, this isn't really modeled off of any specific, um, gun. I guess, um, Desert Eagle-ish. Uh, and... I really don't know any other gun that looks like it. But, yeah. I'm gonna do some changes after this video to it. Because I don't like how blunt it is on the front. I'm gonna, like, angle it up a little bit more. So it doesn't look that bad. But, yeah, I'll start reviewing it, I guess. So, as I said, it's rubber band manual blowback. Um... The iron, iron sights are plastic sights in this case, I guess. <laughs> Trying to line it up. Are just simple, like, cat ears or the P sign, I don't know. And it's just upside down triangle. I don't know. But yeah, on top of this, it's got uh, little rails just enough to fit my mini red dot or holographic. It doesn't do it any good by having this on because it makes the recoil a bit more slower and I guess after a couple shots it falls off too <laughs> yeah so that's that um I got this is my first gun ever with a hammer right there it doesn't do anything special it's just there when I pull the trigger back the hammer goes back, and then it resets it. The hammer also helps to um, reset this all the way forward, because when I didn't have the hammer on, it would stop right about here, but since the hammer has a rubber band, the hammer pushes it forward just enough to get it reset in perfect position. Um, yeah, that's, there's really not much. Um, I've got a guide, a guide line up here on top. I kind of hit. I kind of hit it away with these rails. I didn't plan on it, but it makes it look a bit, a little bit more disguised. And I have one in the side here. For wondering how I did that, I just used like a million of these pieces. This holds the hammer. A million of these, I put in a line as you can see right there. That's all hollowed out. And then I have a black one of these gray pieces right there, over here, holding this uh, little piece in. So that's also a guide. That's on the right side. If you were righty, it wouldn't really uh, work out. But if you're lefty like me, since I plan on making the shell ejecting, I have to have this end out hollow. Which, by shell ejecting, I don't mean I'm going to eject Lego shells. I mean I'm going to eject real shells, like the 9mm. Because my dad brought me some back when he was shooting. Uh, doing his little... His tests for the Air Force or whatever. So, yeah. So, it's going to shoot real little 9mm shells. Uh, you could actually fit the 5.56 in there, too, if you wanted. Definitely not the 30 out 6. Um, yeah. Uh, it's really, oh yeah, and then the magazine. Simple. Just slick and 
Yeah. And it's not my best magazine, but it's who cares? You're not. It's not on the outside of the gun. So yeah, it's like Desert Eagleish, I guess. Um. Yeah, I tried to make the entire top slide um go back and forth, but I always have a lot of trouble with that. I've never really figured it out because. I don't know, I, I just needed a lot of rubber bands and it put too much stress on it, so this back part's good enough for me. I honestly like it better than the entire top going back. I, I pretty, I like it a lot. Um, yeah, this will also double as an update for my M1 Grand. Uh, here it is. I didn't do any internal upgrades, or whatever you want to call it. It's all, actually I did. Those two red things I added for the shell ejecting. It ejects two shells, one at a time. They're just little these, a bunch of little rings on them. I I can only fit two in there, so yeah. Now you just hold it normally, hold the bolt catch down, and then and it ejects two. If you if you heard that, hit the laptop. Damn it! I just broke the bolt. If you heard that hit the laptop, then you should have heard a one, then a two. They ejected both at different times. I'll do it again for you. From the front. Ah, oh, didn't work that time. Yeah, I'll try it again just to get a perfect run for you. Alright, let's see. God damn it! Never, <laughs> oh, I know why. Wait, this time it'll work. There. All right. Now, I'll just shoot it like this for a second to get a close up. God damn! That injected both of them at the same time. I'll try one more. I don't know why. Just because I'm trying to hold it awkward f for the um video because you usually have it shouldered correctly one two there when I, when I usually have it held like this and like you should it doesn't it ejects fine it's just because I'm trying I got a weird angle for the um, video as you can see the stock is very fragile because it's fallen off about three times in the past 30 seconds. There, that's that. This has been an update for my M1 Garand and a review of my uh, little Lego pistol. Not modeled after any specific gun. Well, yeah, I hope you liked it. Please comment and subscribe. As I said, I will be doing a video on my ghillie wrap for my. UTG Master Sniper Rifle. Bye.